All right, so one question I get a lot is, Justin, do you buy snakes? All right, this is a very, very special snake. All right, so one question I get a lot is, Justin, do you buy snakes? And I actually do buy quite a few because there's so many really cool morphs in this industry that I don't have yet have, so many really cool, awesome things that people hit that I can't seem to get, or or just the odds are too tough, and I'm like, wow, I've gotta get that snake, it's amazing. Um, it's a really awesome part of this industry that we all can support each other. So now I'm gonna show you a few of the amazing animals that I purchased this year, my absolute favorites, and there's gonna be a few that I don't show. So if I bought a snake from you and I don't show it, it's because I think it's so special that I'm not ready to show it yet. Let's check them out. Okay, so these first two are from Ryan Pate and they are featuring the Russo gene. So the het Russo, that is part of the Blue-Eyed Lucy complex, but it gives it a really interesting look compared to the other Lucy complex animals. Let's look at these up close. Here we have This is a Fire Russo clown. And I've been wanting to get the Russo in my clown because another enhancer mutation that, although it is part of the BEL complex, it has a very, very different look. It's kind of a brightening, um, enhancing um, gene without really changing the color too drastically. So this is a Fire Russo clown and the color on it is just really spectacular. Great pattern too. The Russo has a little bit of jaggedness in there. And then this second one is even cooler. This is Fire Russo Spot Nose Clown. Um, Ryan, you really knocked out of the park hatching these, and these are both amazing girls. I'm just honored to own them now. They're just incredible. One of the absolute coolest things I've ever bought, actually. This is from Grant, and he is at Designing Morphs, and that's up in Canada. And this is the first triple recessive that I've ever owned. It's an absolutely amazing, and I'm so excited to work with it. This is a genetic stripe clown and enhancer. Now, the enhancer is a, a recessive mutation that is compatible with Desert Ghost. Now, exactly how different or similar it is, that's up for debate but it is absolutely beautiful. But essentially what we're working with here is three recessives in one animal, the clown, the G-stripe, the pattern clashing, incredible combo. That's been well documented by some of the people who out there who have been pioneering this project. And then the enhancer gene just pops those colors to a new level. Okay, this animal is something that was entrusted to me by Ernesto Gutierrez and he makes some absolutely incredible snakes and was so kind to let me purchase this amazing, amazing animal. This is actually an asphalt pied, but is a highly paradoxed animal. We have some normal pied pattern here, asphalt pied pattern, and then this crazy, crazy yellow paradoxing. Now it's been proven to be just an asphalt pie, which is completely expected but what an amazing kind of showcase animal this is and an amazing um, to be able to use this animal to make the offspring that you'll know just came from the very very best and coolest stock out there okay this little animal is really cool because this is a blackhead genetic stripe and this is just a combo that you don't see very often so when i had the opportunity to grab this girl i got it from reed at tall grass reptiles great guy great animals and he and i have had the opportunity to transfer some animals both ways, um, great customer, great guy. Um, this is a really neat animal because you see the blackhead just really, really changes the tone and the color of the G-stripe. And I thought this would be really cool because I've started working with the blackhead clowns and blackhead um, ultramels and all that stuff. It'd be really neat to move into the G-stripe versions and be able to do the super blackhead at the same time. So just an exciting little girl to put on the shelf and work into the projects you know, over the next three to four years. 
All right, guys, so this next gene is a hurricane. Um, really excited to work with this, and this gene was pioneered by Hans Winter over in Germany. So there's a few here in the States, but it's a really, really neat gene that I suggest you get a hold of if possible. This animal is absolutely insanely great. This is an inchy vanilla hurricane. Now hurricanes are like a, a deep kind of granite look. They're, they're very, um, in a way you, you see granite, you think, oh, it's another granite, but the hurricane has a very unique super and it is very, very powerful when it comes to the combos. We're seeing some really unique stuff out of it. So this is an inchy vanilla hurricane, possible het pied. It's been bred to an ODYB vanilla pied. This could be ODYB inchy pied. So really excited. We might see some hurricane pies, which are absolutely insane. Hans has made some really great ones. Um, or we might see some really nice new um, hurricane hats. I'll show you the head here. She's hiding it. But a really, really amazing gene. And I appreciate Hans letting me work with this and look forward to seeing a lot of really cool stuff from that this year. Yeah. So this is a combination. Remember, you clear with the pie balls over there. I think you have the random oh, amounts really? of white. Oh, yeah. So we have, um, let's see on this table, we have one, two, three, four pie balls. All different amounts of white. And the way they look different is based on what genes I layered on top of it. You know, you have to go all the way black. I mean, that big, big contrast. You go bright orange. It's bright orange and white. It's bright orange and black. This is another way of more purple and red. It's all, you have to have, that's what I love this business, it's a combination of math, science, and art. You know, the art is oh, where yeah. I can envision 10 years ahead, I want to work for the next 10 years on a project, and I'll find out what it looks like when I get there. I have to envision whether that's worthwhile, I think. And you'll just right. keep mating those snakes together to Move get... Step by step to yeah. get all the genes in there, because it's just a very complicated process. Unbelievable. But you don't know until you get there, but you have to know have a lot of knowledge about what all the genes look like individually, how they interact. You see, some combination starts coming, you might have to change course a little bit, and um, that's been to be like one of the best parts of this. All right, this is something kind of interesting. It's a different way of looking at recessives versus codoms. And it's a way that simplifies the whole outlook on how these genes work and how the genes are passed. So what you realize is if you drill right down to it and you look at this simple different way, recessive and codoms actually work exactly the same. And once you trick your mind into thinking of it that way, it makes it much simpler to do these math problems in your head. Okay, so on a recessive, we're just going to do it and we're going to talk about how they're the same. On the recessive, you're going to have a het, we're going to do a simple het um, to a het. Okay, so you would have a, say let's do a pi, so we go a small pi gene and it's going to have a normal gene, that's male, and we're going to have a pi gene and a normal gene, the female, so that's het to het. Okay, over here, we're going to do a pastel to a pastel, all right? So we all know, you do pastel to pastel, one and four will be a super pastel. You do pi to het pi to het pi, one and four will be pied. So we're already kind of onto it a little bit. All right, so what can be passed? The male will pass a pi gene in a normal gene. The female will pass a pi gene in a normal gene. And so if we do this pairing, we're gonna get a pied, one and four, a het pied, a het pied, and then a normal. Okay, now let's look at this one. So over here, we're gonna get a pastel and normal gene, pastel, normal gene. We're gonna get a super pastel with two copies of the pastel gene, a pastel with a copy of the pastel, copy of the normal, another pastel, and then a normal. Look at this, you see the similarities. Suddenly we have a visual pied, a visual super pastel. It works the same way. You get a normal. You get a normal, the same one and four for a normal, same one and four for a visual super of the codom or a visual of the recessive. So where it's a little different is here we have two het pieds and a normal. All of these look normal, that's the difference. But we still have two of the heterozygous for the super pastel, two 
that are a single copy, two that are the single copy. The only difference is you don't know which two of these three are the hats and which one's the normal. Over here, you do know. So that's why we know that two out of every three normals are gonna be het pied. That means there's a two thirds chance or 66% chance that any of these normals will be het pied. So that's why we know we call this one a pied and then these three will be 66% hats. Over here, these would be 66% hats as well if, the, if pastel wasn't visual, but because it is, we can pick out the normal and we can pick out the pastels, the same one and four for the super. It works exactly the same way. The only difference is what you know and what you don't know about the offspring. Hey guys, so for part of this week's vlog, I'm getting ready for the Arlington show that's coming up this weekend. And I figured I'd just prep everything here on camera, let you guys kind of see all the stuff I'm getting ready. And I'm really looking forward to the show and I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you guys there and hanging out. So let's get right to it. Alright guys, so this is pretty much our Arlington setup. I've got I've got all three of our banners we're gonna have. I've got display cases, of course, all of our t-shirts, I've got stickers ready to go so I can start making sticker packs for people while we get there. Um, all of our electronics, our extra tables, everything. So when you're going to shows, you can never have too many extension cords. That's just a pro tip right there. But uh, we are so excited and cannot wait to be there. And looking forward to meeting a ton of you and hanging out with a ton of you that we already know. So, thanks guys.